So this video is going to be almost like the common man, the working man's guide to debugging code. And I say that because there's so many misconceptions around debugging. There's so many buttons that are confusing. And not only on top of that, but debugging is so important because it's your only way that you can pretty much see inside of your code. And the first thing that you need to realize when you're debugging is that you need to realize what is executing and in what fashion. How does this code right here execute? And you don't need to actually type this out. It's not really that important. You can just watch. But one of the most important things is you have to realize in JavaScript and in most programming languages in general is that this right here is not going to execute first. Most code that you see is not going to execute 100% sequentially. And the biggest rule of thumb that I can give anybody is that just really realize is that the, act, the storing of functions and variables will happen, but this code is not actually being executed. Many times people think that a function is going to be executed to a certain extent, but the actual function is being executed down here. So number one, just realize that. So let's actually step through and let's start debugging because that's pretty much all you need to know for right now. So what the next thing that you have to do is most code bases are so large that you have to set what's called a breakpoint. And you may have seen a breakpoint and it's pretty much like this little red button looking thing, a little red dot, but we set breakpoints because code bases are so large that you can't just hit the debug button and just, you know, have it execute anywhere. You need to tell the computer exactly where to execute. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to execute right here. The next thing that you want to do is you just want to hit run and debug. Now there's a couple things that could happen. If you're in node, if you're in Java, if you're in C sharp world, you're going to have to go into here and you're going to have to add a configuration. It's pretty simple to do. Just type in whatever programming language that you're using, whatever environment, .NET, VS Code configuration, debugging, and you will get a configuration. And then you'll have to add a configuration file. But we're not in Node world right now. We're in front-end JavaScript world. So the next thing that's going to happen is that the computer's actually going to pause right here where we set the actual breakpoint. All of this has been stored in memory. Nothing has executed. Remember, all the actual work is going on down here when the actual function executes. So the next thing that we can do is we have, the, we can hit different buttons essentially. This button right here is super easy. This is just gonna shut it off. You'll use this a lot because you, a lot of times you're going to have to shut it. You're obviously, eventually you will have to shut it off. You will use this one when you step through, you step through or you stepped past something. Let's just say you wanted to debug here and you step down to test three and you step too far. This is the restart. The step out is going to be a little bit more confusing. And I'm going to show you here in a second how the step ins and step out step outs work. This button right here is going to take you to your next breakpoint. So if you want to go to your next breakpoint, you hit this one, and this is going to take you to your next breakpoint if you have multiple breakpoints. If you don't have them, what's going to happen is the program's going to actually execute the full way through, and you're pretty much done. So this is when things are going to get, This is these buttons right here, especially these two, are going to be the most important ones. I think these two buttons right here, if you are paying attention to any part of the video, you're paying attention to the important part because I'm about to go over these two right here. So there's a big difference between this and actually stepping into a function. You see, what's happening is that you are just going to the next function. And the reason that we have this button and we don't just execute or actually go into each function, like going into it just like this, what's happening is that you don't want to go into every single function inside of your program because once again, this debugging is for large code bases. Most people who are working are working in large code bases and you don't want to step into every single function because every function is its own little world and it has its own little problems. And a lot of us don't want to get involved in everybody else's problems, so to speak. So that's the reason why we have this button so that we can just skip to the next function. But what will happen is that you don't, you want to go and like, what if we want to go inside test two and I keep hitting this button and nothing's happening? 
Well, what's happening is that you need to step into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to shut it back down. So I think it's frozen. Okay. Let's start it back up. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down to test two. So we just click this button right here. And what's going to happen when we step into it is it's going to actually go into the function. And when we step into it, it kind of makes sense. You step into the function. The next one is going to be step out. So if we want to step out to the next function, this is going to have us step out so that we don't have to, let's just say this function test two function is so long. We don't even want to go through the whole entire thing. A lot of times you want to step out of the function and you want to go back into this part right here. You want to go back into the actual world that you want to continue and you don't want to continue in this other test to world and that's the reason that we have the step out function and like i said most 99 percent of your time is going to be spent right here and this is going to be what allows you to actually continue this button right here should really be called the continue button this button should be this pro button is appropriately named but this more likely should be the continue button and this is going to be the step into function what's going to allow us to actually step in to functions anyways that's going to be the video for uh vs code debugging in javascript i hope that that was very explanatory and helped you get javascript debugging because it's a very important skill to have anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching